Okay, we're back. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Right, so I'm, I'm excited today. I have this pet peeve about the way that people talk about circuits, okay? Okay. So you've, you've had circuits before in your classes and things like that. Mm -hmm. What do electrons look like when, when they're going through the circuit? What do you, what do you typically see? I typically see an uh, electron just moving steadily toward one direction or not. Right. Here's my pet peeve. That's totally wrong. That's not at all <laughs> what <laughs> happens in real life, but no one, no one goes to the trouble of actually trying to, to show what actually happens to electrons. Okay. Okay? So are you guys ready to see? Are you ready to see what yes. it's actually? All yeah, right. I'm, so, I'm ready to see this. All right. So there's a link below the screen that you should be able to click on. The direct link is go.osu.edu slash conductor, so we can go ahead and bring that up. Uh, we worked really hard to, to get this thing. Here it is. Here it is. All right. So uh, the little blue things are electrons, mm -hmm. and they're negatively charged. The positive things are ions. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else do you notice about this? Well, the this first thing, thing I notice is that the electrons have an uh, acceleration vector, which is the purple arrow, and a velocity a vector, which is a, the red arrow, and I see that the le uh, they are all pointing toward, have a tendency to point toward the right. In addition to the vectors of the electrons, I see a uh, kind of a, a yellowish, orangish vector, a, I mean, a, not a vector, but a big arrow pointing to the left. And the reason why that the, the acceleration vector of the electron is pointing the opposite direction of this orangish arrow is because that orangish arrow represents the electric uh, the electric field. So the negatively charged electrons are moving against or the opposite direction of the electric field. That's right. Now there's another cool thing about this where you notice that once the particles get above sort of this level, what happens? Um, well, once they get above a certain level, the electrons accelerate toward down the ions or the positive charged particles. And also, that same thing you can see toward down this uh, level is that once they get below, or once the electrons get below this level, they are accelerating back toward the, um, the ions. Right. So why, why is that happening? Oh, because negative charge or oppositely charged particles um, attract each other. Right. So. So we've got all that in there, mm -hmm. and uh, here's here's the other cool thing about this. I think you're kind of standing in front of it oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. So we're actually measuring the drift velocity here. Now the drift velocity is uh, it's not the actual like speed of the electrons. It's sort of like the overall kind of average tendency for this thing, for these things to go to the right. So for example, if one electron sort of bounces back this way, that makes the drift velocity a little bit less because it's you know going the opposite way. That would be a negative. Uh, velocity. So we're actually measuring that here, which is really cool because what we can do is we can increase the electric field. So I don't know if you guys noticed this, but at the top this whole time it's been saying, press E to change the electric field strength. Notice how the drift velocity increases with E. Right. What a great idea. So let's do that. Um, let's do it. If I press E just once time, you will first notice that the electric field uh, goes from two to three. So you're increasing the electric field. Um, but also, more importantly, you will see that the drift velocity increased from four to five, correct? Yeah, so uh, what else do you notice about the little vectors there? Oh, well, first off, you see that um, the electron uh, acceleration vectors, they are just longer and they are just, well, at first you see that the electrons are speeding up, they're moving faster, but the uh, acceleration vectors are um, just more um, longer, in mag so representing a bigger magnitude. Yeah, so they're accelerating faster to the right. Right. Uh, we can go ahead and increase the electric field one more time from three to four. I'll see what happens. And you see the same effect, and you actually, you really now see the uh, the um, electric field now, and um, you see that the acceleration uh, vectors of the electrons are uh, even more longer than they were before. And one cool thing we forgot to mm -hmm. point out is that in this. Um, um, Interactive. Oh, you that's can actually, right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can add, add stuff to it. More. Um, so, the one thing I love doing go. is so you can kind of like whoosh. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty see. fun. So, yeah. yeah. But if you increase the electric field, the um, electrons will accelerate 
more to the right or to the opposite direction of the electric field. Cool. Now this this sounds it sounds familiar to me. If you increase the electric field, the things move faster or something. Is there some well known thing about conductors and resistors and things like that? Right. Um, so if I just take uh, write down a um, a simple um, equation, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it right put it right here. It seemed like a good error for it, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys can see this at home. My handwriting is not the best. So um, if I just break down what this um, uh, equation says. So we're not really going to get too much into this, but this is known as the potential um, difference. Um, and this is known as the, the current, the charge per second. And this is just the uh, resistance, the um, physical properties um, of the conductor. So if we increase the, um, the electric field, um, we also increase the potential difference. And if we keep the resistance, the, the um, metal or the, uh, the length of the conductor, the absolutely same, then increasing this and keeping, increasing the potential difference or the electric field and keeping the resistance the same you uh, by effect um, increases the, um, the current or the charge per second. Yeah, I knew that was related to something that was <laughs> familiar to everyone whenever we talk about resistors and conductors and things. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready for your mind to be blown? Uh, my mind is blown now. Already? Yeah. I know. Um, so here's the thing. This is all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, Definitely an improvement on what you typically see with, you know, those little circuits where the electrons are marching through, like you were saying. Absolutely. It's still not quite all the way perfectly accurate, okay? And, and if we put down an equation, I can show you why. Okay. Um, well, there's another equation, and okay. we're not going to go into many of the details. I'm going to go ahead and give um, us a, a, a background here. Yeah, that sound, that looked great. There um, you go. So we got our uh, current, our I. Um, which is can um, is related to n, which is the number of electrons, uh, e, which is the charge of the electron, and also uh, our drift velocity, and then a, which is you can think of it as the um, you can think of it as I'm not the best artist, Dr. Orban, but. You can think of it as that cross section area, and as you see from the interactive, the electrons was um, going this way, and our um, electric field was that way. And we'll just put E right there. Yeah. Cool. So what's that VD again? Oh, and as I said, um, the VD is our drift velocity. So let's just put in uh, some typical numbers for uh, the current the number of electrons per, you know, per unit volume, charge area. Let's just figure out, let's just come up with a number for what the drift velocity would be. Right, so um, if we divide N, E, and A, uh, we would get this. Brother, you're looking good today. <sighs> yeah, I had a um, career fair to attend to, so, oh. Um, excuse me. Yeah. All right. So, um. Looks good. Yeah. So we put, um, some values in, um, for this. We can get, uh. So what do you think we should use for values here? We could probably use one for the current, or one charge per second. Yeah. So like this, you know, this power cable is like, maybe like one, one amp, one coulomb per second. So it, Maybe we we'll just throw that into there. See what see what we get. Um, I happen to know that the 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 number of electrons per unit volume down there is about ten to the twenty nine electrons per cubic meter. Um, so don't ask me where I got that number from, but that's what it is. Um, if we were doing so that's for a metal. So if we were doing like sparks in air, we'd probably do something much lower than that. But that's 10 to the 29 there. 
Do you, do you remember the charge of the electron? Um, it's 1.9 times 10. Uh, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. It is, is it 10 to the 19? Yeah. Negative. Minus 19. Yeah. yeah. Negative 19. There you go. And that's, what units is that? Charge. That's, yeah, that's the Coulomb. Yeah. yeah. So, and so last thing is area. And so let's say we had, you know, something like this. So like one, one centimeter by one centimeter cube. That would be something like, so I mean, this would be one meter squared, right? So we want something much smaller than that. So maybe that's, I don't know, 10 to the minus four meters squared. Seems reasonable. And these are just ballpark numbers, right? Right. So, so let's work this out. So this is 10 to the 24, sorry, 20, 10 to the 29 mm -hmm. times 10 to the minus 19. That's going to be 10 to the 10. 10 to the 10 times 10 to the minus 4. That's 10 to the 6 on the bottom. So we're going to get 10 to the 6, 10, sorry, 10 to the minus 6 on top, right? And then this is about 2, so 1 over 2. So that's going to be something like, what do you say? Five to the five times ten to the negative seven. Seven, yeah. Meters per second. Yep. Um, we could just put it right here. But so if you just plug this into the calculator, this is closest to what you're going to get. Again, not um, just a, um, a quick guess of what it might be. Now, is that shockingly big or shockingly small? That's really, really, really slow. <laughs> like, really, really slow. Like, th like this is like 0 0.1 meters per second, you know, walking around the room here. Yeah, that's uh, that's nowhere near. Uh, that's, I don't even, can something move that slow? I mean, it's on average. I mean, it's, they're kind of bouncing around, but there's only, on average, there's only, it's, it's just, I mean, it'll take like decades to get, for electrons to get from like the power station down those. Right. I, 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 I don't understand how it's that, it, it moved that slow. So, so this is why that interactive is wrong, mm -hmm. right? Is because in reality, the drift speed is so slow that you never, like you, can, like you can see high voltage power lines, you can walk faster than those electrons. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. They're moving this, I mean, we, and those power lines, they might have a thousand amps. So you multiply this by a thousand, you get, you know, 10 to the, you still have 10 to the minus four. So, you know, people can, I don't know, how fast can people run, do you think? I don't know, maybe 10 meters per second? Yeah, 15, something like that. Yeah, 15 meters per second. I don't know how fast I can run, but maybe five for me, yeah, but. Maybe, 10, maybe, maybe five, 10 is too much, maybe seven-ish. Yeah, so, uh, so let me, sh all right, so here we go. How about I show you a, a more realistic version of the interactive, okay? Yeah, okay. Now that we know that, it's, that the drift speed is super small, how about, how about we, we, show, we show the good people out on YouTube what it actually looks like? Yeah. Ready? All right, yeah. let's erase this thing. Yeah. Um. Okay, here we go. This is what it actually, closer to what it's doing in real life. And it, now you've noticed that, what do we do with the electric field here? Um, it's smaller, it was two originally, and now it's 0.2. So right. we, uh, it's uh, multiplied by a factor of two, a factor of 10. Right, so you notice how small these acceleration arrows now, the little purple ones? Yeah. You can barely see it. Now, I've, I've multiplied the drift velocity measurement by the factor of 10 to try to compensate uh, just for the heck of it. So it's not actually going that fast. Um, but what, what do you notice about the trajectories now? Um, they are just going everywhere. Like some of them actually are moving toward the left. That's um, right. They're just going in any direction. Yep, these ones. Going back. Yeah, so. <laughs> there they go, those ones over there. Yeah. 
and you kind of watch him, they'll kind of bounce forward a couple of times and bounce back, things like that. This is much closer to what actually happens inside a real conductor or real resistor. So, and you can still play around with it. You can increase the electric field and see what happens and things like that. So I just increased it to 0.3. Um, but this is a little bit closer. And you can still add stuff to it. Yeah, you know how to do that. So, um, so we hope you enjoy these interactives. And uh, we're happy to set the record straight. Mm -hmm. uh, my pet peeve can now be put to rest now that we've, we've done this. So thanks for your help. And uh, come back again for another video.